Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And it is time for the return of the Sheet Load Rewind. I hope you'll stick around to see what month I'm rewinding to and see the cards that I'm going to create. As I mentioned in my little update video earlier this month, which if you missed it, I'll link it as a card up here. I have a couple series that are returning to my channel. And that is today's The Sheet Load Rewind and tomorrow's The Show Us Your Sheet Load slash Happy Mail feature. I hope that you're excited about the return of both of these. In the Sheet Load Rewind series, I revisit a past sheet load of cards. Sometimes I switch it up, sometimes I just make a new set. This gives those of you who are newer to my channel a chance to check out old editions, and those who have been here since the beginning, just a little revisit for you as well. This month, I'm rewinding it back to January 2022, and we're going to make some Valentine's Day slash Galentine's Day slash love cards. With three pieces of pattern paper, I'm going to yield nine cards. And this sketch was inspired by a card from my friend Danny, which was inspired by a Mojo Monday sketch. I did get permission from both of them when I put out this edition to use that sketch. And I will have links in the description box below for you to check out. I still even have the card that Danny made that inspired this edition. I love owls. I love things that wear glasses. So I'm definitely treasuring this one. Once I'm done with my set today, if you haven't yet downloaded this printable, which is free to subscribers of my channel, I will tell you how you can do that. Now it's time to get started on the process and I'll tell you about the products and tools I'm using for today's cards. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those down there in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my cards today, I'm using papers from Echo Park's Love Notes collection. These might look familiar as they're the same sheets I used for my first set using the January 2024 sheet load. If you haven't yet downloaded this edition, I will link the video in the description box below. I get started by cutting the pattern papers per the cutting guides on the printable. Since I have already done a full process video of this, I won't show it again, but I will link that process video down in the description box below. Once I had all of the pattern papers cut, I was left with some scraps, which I'll show you later how we'll use those. Next, I cut the cardstock mats, which take note that for CS2, you only need one and a half sheets of your coordinating cardstock. For CS1, you need nine squares that are two and a half inches. And like I mentioned on the printable, this is a great piece for scraps, and that's what I use to cut mine. For my card bases, I just grabbed nine I already had pre-made. Mine do fold on the top, but you could definitely use a side folding if that's what you prefer. I brought in my smaller pattern paper pieces and their mats, which I cut from Gina K Design's Dusty Rose cardstock, and I put these together off screen. You'll see here that two ends are always flush on these pieces, and then two sides have that pink border. My next step would normally be to put the largest piece of pattern paper onto the card base, but to help conserve some pattern paper, I'm actually going to bring in this mini envelope punch and punch one of those from each piece. Because of the sizing of the punch, later that matted vertical strip will cover up the opening. A great way to conserve paper and nobody will ever know that there's an envelope shape size hole in it. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would take a minute to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. This way you'll be the first to know when I have a new video posted. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. 
Once I had all nine of my envelopes punched out, I added what was remaining of pattern paper piece A to the front center of the card bases. Later, I will be using those punched out envelopes as part of my focal point. If you would like to try the same but don't have this punch, you could always use a die maybe from your stash, or if you have a mini envelope punch board, that should work too. All of my pattern paper pieces are cut and matted, so now I'm going to put together the card kits that I'll end up using for each card. I like to do this ahead of time so I don't get to the end and then have maybe two of the same patterns but on the different pieces. I will show you the papers that I collect for each card kit if you want to slow down the video and put yours together right along with me. Once I had all of the pieces distributed, I started putting the card fronts together. To start, I'm going to put the matted vertical strip onto the card base and make sure that it covers up that punched out opening. Then I'm going to take the skinnier horizontal strip and get that put in place. But first I'm going to play around a little bit with my focal point. Because mine will look slightly different than on the sketch because I don't have anything hanging off of the top, I brought in one of the envelopes and played around with how high I wanted the border piece to go and my white square. Once I figure that out, I adhered that horizontal piece across the middle and I did make sure to put good adhesive on each of the ends and press that tightly. I continued putting the rest of the card fronts together and you'll see here on the second one when I go to place the horizontal strip across the middle I did bring in that first card to give me an idea of how high up on the card that strip went. Now you could do this or you could eyeball them totally up to you, figure out what works best and is easiest. Once the card fronts were put together, I started working on my focal points. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold my envelopes. Now you could use a scoring tool or a bone folder and a ruler to make score lines first, but I just put my nails in each of the corners where I wanted the crease to be and folded that back. Once I had the outsides and the bottom done, I brought in some liquid glue to glue down the flaps and I held those in place while I folded down the top. Then to make sure these had a nice good seal, I put them underneath a stamp block off to the side while they dried. I continued folding and adhering the remaining envelopes together until all nine were done and I gave those about five minutes off camera to dry completely. When they were dry, I also cut some little pieces of cardstock that would fit inside for the little note that were one and a quarter inch square. For my sentiment, I chose Cherry Pop ink from Tailored Expressions. I thought it went well with some of the darker reds on the pattern paper. The sentiment stamp I'm going to use reads hello and it's from a not yet released not too shabby set which is chock full of rainbows. As soon as it is available for sale I will put a link in the description box below. I set up my sentiment off camera to fit on the cardstock toward the top center and because it is a new stamp I did ink it up and stamp it twice for this first one and you'll see here how cute that looks stuffed inside the little envelope. For the remaining 8 sentiment squares, I just had to ink it up once and stamp it. The Misty makes quick work when you have to do multiple stamping like this. For the rest of the focal point, which I'll be putting the envelopes on to the CS1 white cardstock square, I decided that it was a little too much white that I wanted to add some texture. So I brought in this hearts embossing folder and you'll see here the slight difference that makes. This next step is totally optional. I did do a little adjusting where my square goes, so because it hangs off the top of that center strip so much, I want to put a little cardstock behind it to help keep that lifted up. So I took a white strip of cardstock, 
I put adhesive on one side, fold it in half, and then put this at the top back of that white square. Now when I go to adhere that onto the card base, that top part will stay up, it won't get pushed down because it has that piece behind it. Christy Marcotte does this a lot and I'm sure some of you do as well. I usually don't do it, but for this, because of those two layers and how much it overhung, I decided that I would use this little helper. Once all the squares were in place, it was time to add my envelopes, and I decided that whatever pattern paper was on the back panel, so for this first one, it's the envelope pattern paper, that would be the pattern paper of the envelope that I put on the square. Now I did only add adhesive to the back of the envelope, I didn't put it on the back of the flap, that way that was still kind of free to move on the card and add a little more dimension. Once that was on there, I added my little note, and then I continued to add the envelopes and notes to the remaining cards. Now I'm going to show you how I use my pattern paper scraps. For this, I brought in an oldie but a goodie, this Creative Memories Wavy Trimmer. And I put each of the strips, which I had already cut the little branding strip off of, into the trimmer on the small wave, just one mark to the left of the one inch. And you'll see here then when I cut it, I have two wavy pieces, one straight edge on each piece. If you still have this trimmer, let me know in the comment section below. It's one that I don't use often, but I will never get rid of it. To fit these into my cards, I cut each of the strips into three sections that were four inches wide. I did want the top and bottom wave to match, so when I cut the top one, I flipped it upside down so I would have that straight edge once again going along the bottom to cut from right to left those four inch pieces. Then off camera, I put these on the inside, and because the front was already kind of busy, I did not add the suggested trio of gems or sequence as the sketch calls for. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this little rewind to January 2022 and seeing how I made this set of 9 cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. As always, I do ask that you're subscribed to my channel before you click on the link, which I'll tell you where it's at here in just a minute. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you sign up for anything or send me any proof. Please just make sure you have clicked on the subscribe button before you click on the link. I also ask that you do not share the printable, electronic, or physical copy with anyone else. If you have a crafty friend or family member who would like to download it to get the dimensions and the instructions, please send them my way. You are going to find the link to the January 2022 sheet load of cards down in the description box right below my P.O. Box address. It will say below the link to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is the password. Having you watch the videos, as well as support from my channel members, is how I keep Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. You can download it to your device and print it, or you can just view it on screen and use it from there. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.